engine jcp data engineering so in this video we will see bigquery routines right so if you say routines so there are different types of routines uh, uh, we will see under this section right so uh, even uh, bigquery functions right that means user defined functions and uh, store procedures and also anonymous blocks comes under this section okay but in this video we will concentrate or we will focus on uh, these two concepts procedures and anonymous blocks okay okay so before uh, moving uh, to the actual demo right we'll we'll try to understand right so what is the stored procedures and and, and anonymous block okay so uh, if you guys right so already you have some experience in working uh, relational databases right uh, you might have already known this concept right what what is a stored procedure and uh, what is the anonymous block right so here is the different so a uh, stored procedure is have some input and output parameters and uh, you will be storing that particular uh, object right we call it as object so in case of relational database uh, or terminology we call it as a object database object uh, if we can understand it it in the same way so we call it as an object so which will be stored in the database in case of bigquery so you can store it in some data set so it will have some input and output parameters so it is not mandatory to have output parameters always so so usually it is uh, uh, expected expected to have some input parameters uh, to a procedure so that is procedures so you you will just name that object and you will store that object in in a, a specific data set in a big way so we call it as a procedure then what is the anonymous block anonymous means that name itself uh, uh, clearly explaining right it doesn't have any name you are exact you are not exactly storing this particular object in the bigquery itself it doesn't have any input and output parameters so you have to explicitly declare its local variables and you have to define and you have to define uh, the respective data type and you have to make use of those uh, variables right this is a difference in okay so now you are clear so then we'll try to understand why we need uh, procedures and anonymous blocks in the bigquery usually in a, in a in a practical scenario right so for example let's say uh, there is an use case uh, where you have to uh, execute a set of sql statements um, uh, in sequence and also you have to execute those sql statements based on some condition right and also in iterative mode that means in loops in such case you have to use this anonymous blocks or else stored procedures so now you know the use case okay so here usually that the typical structure look like this it will have a declaration section and this flow con and then flow control that is execution section uh, with some if else or, or some loops so we'll have uh, all this based on our requirement and then error handling that is exception handling okay so if you have to perform repeated tasks right um, then you can uh, create some stored procedures uh, to execute those tasks right so then we'll quickly move to the demo first of all let us uh, make a use case and uh, in which use case we have to use this right so practically right so uh, in, i mean to say in real time scenario right now uh, let us concentrate on this demo okay so let me copy this first section okay first of all we'll try to understand our use case okay now let us say uh, someone some client uh, has come to you and asked you to create a process uh, or it can be a script or, or a set of scripts uh, to capture the table statistics in a bigquery project right from all the data sets right and into a single table so in that case what you will do usually so you will have the table stats in this metadata view okay that is this is a particular metadata view where you can get all the table stats okay let me execute this query okay so then you will come to know 
just see in my BigQuery project I have these many data sets as of now so and uh, just notice okay this metadata use always associate associated to a particular data set if you want to get the details about all the metadata details of a particular table belong to a, a, a data set you will have to use the syntax so this is the data set name and you have to even mention the project name but anyway that is optional if you are in the on the project already if you are trying to exclude this query from the different project definitely you will have to mention the project name right but here I am trying to execute this query in the same project that's why I'm not providing the project name over here this is the data set and dot and then tables right now it has one table okay this is the table and you can see uh, the other details like uh, last modified time and row count and the sizing bytes and type type means if it is a table it is one if it is a view it's a different thing okay so right now we are concentrating on only table statistics you would like to just get the details like lost modified time and row count and also size in gigabytes okay now we'll move to the next query this is the same thing but only modification i'm doing i'm just formatting my results as per my requirement here i'm just converting this bytes into gigabytes and then uh, this is in a different format i'm just converting into our date format okay so so that you will see the formatted results okay so let us run this again for the same data set okay now you can see it is in gigabytes and you can you can see the last modified time in our standard date time format okay so now this is for one data set okay but client has asked you to collect this information for uh, information for every other data set uh, available in the project entire project okay in, in such case what you will do right you, you know, there are few possibilities right whether you will have to uh, write these queries as it is and you have to do a union all and uh, if there are 10 data sets you will be having a 10 queries with union all let us say if there are 100 data set you will have to do that 100 union all. so it is a tedious process and the performance also may decrease there is a possibility right so it's also not recommended if you have 100 data set so in such case definitely you need to have a routine right it's a uh, it can be a procedure or it can be anonymous block so you you have to iterate through data set and you have to collect the information and you have to insert the data into some table right so for that what i am doing i've created one table which will capture all these results right so this is the table which we are going to create in in this is one data set in our project so this will create this table to capture all our table stats for all the data sets okay now it has been created okay now you can see there are no records all right so now we'll move on to our anonymous block section we'll try to achieve this using anonymous block first and then we'll move on to the procedures there will be a minor difference between these two procedures will will have the arguments in out whereas anonymous block will not have okay so now let us go to our anonymous block section okay now i have this over here right so now this is anonymous block okay now let me copy paste this okay now you can see so this is not having any in out arguments this is having only declarative section okay and then the execution section and then exception handling okay so this is optional so it is not mandatory to have exceptional handling so but it is recommended to have exceptional handling any in, in, in case of anonymous array procedures okay right now just try to understand simple so I have declared all the uh, uh, local variables over here so what I am trying to do from the there is a information schema view schema ta which will give you all the data sets which are available in a single project so i'm just collecting all the schema names right then i am putting that into a array you can see this is array aggregation so it will just get all the data sets and it will put that uh, data set list into this array this is an array now okay now i'm looping through each of every data set right so this is a loop it's a simple loop it's not a while or for it's a simple loop 
so in the procedure we will see a for loop okay then incrementing the loop and here i am checking a condition if this uh, loop variable uh, value is greater than uh, this length of the array index then it will come out from that loop so here you can see one particular delete statement why i am putting this statement right so if i am running this uh, particular block for the same day again and again i don't want to retain the data so i will delete the data for the same day and then i will try to insert that's what i am doing but here we are using the concept called dynamic sql so so many of you already you have an experience working with this dynamic sql right so if you have to dynamically construct uh, the SQL statement and execute it then you will use this concept okay here why have to go for this because if you see my uh, this particular uh, select statement from this metadata so it will the syntax is like this right you have to provide the data set name and then this metadata view so since you have to collect this information for every data set so dynamically you have to pass the data set name right that's why we have to go for this dynamic sql feature so this is the uh, statement or we are keep we are putting that once we construct that sql statement we are putting that into a, a local variable query and then we are executing it that so that it will in a loop it will construct that dynamic sql collect the stats and insert that data into uh, our table we have created this table in our uh, uh, previous step right so now you are clear right so let me execute this script now right so now it will take some time to execute we have four to five data sets so if you try to examine the data set this data set is having two tables and uh, this this has one table only and this has seven to eight tables and uh, this has only one table so maybe it will it, it won't take much time uh, let's see now you can see this is completed okay um, you can see for since it is a, a script procedural script right so it will have a multiple output uh, values getting displayed right so now we'll try we will go to our table which has create which has been created in our last step and uh, we'll try to query this table now this should have all the okay uh, stats pertaining to all the data sets right so you can see data set name and the table name starts collection date that is current date time I'm, I'm inserting record count last modified time and size in gigabytes okay you can see this right so I hope you are clear right now the same thing we will try to achieve with the store procedures for that okay so what we can do so first of all let us create or replace this table again let us empty this table okay now right now this is not having any results no now with the by using procedure we'll try to achieve the same uh, uh, output okay okay first of all uh, yeah now same thing same logic i don't have to explain it again only difference is here uh, what I'm trying to do, uh, I'm just trying to pass, okay, uh, one input argument and then I'm trying to extract some output through this output argument, okay. So this input argument essentially uh, is a data set list. In case of uh, our anonymous blocks, I'm trying to collect stats for uh, all the data sets uh, present in a pro project. But here, I would like to uh, uh, get those stats for the given data for selected data sets i'm going to say if i want to collect that information for only few data sets then i can restrict that using this input arguments so that's what i'm trying to do here you can see the same logic it take this uh, uh, input uh, argument that is data set list basically you are giving data set list in uh, in this format that is comma separated analysis has to something like something like this I'm giving here right so you have to give data sets in comma separated format that is a string so what it will do it will take that input argument and it will split that in based on the comma and then it will learn so once it split that string uh, based on comma separated then it will become an array so you have to unnest it in order to 
just change it to a row format. That's what I'm doing in this logic. Okay, right? And then remaining thing is same for the same date, deleting and uh, constructing a dynamic SQL and then executing it. Okay, so in the first case, we'll try to uh, right create this procedure. Okay, and this will create a procedure now. Store procedures. In case of anonymous, nowhere it will store. I've already told you, right? But in case of procedure, it will store. You can see in the analysis data set, I'm creating this procedure, right? You can see in the analysis data set, you can see under the routine section, you can see this stored procedure name, okay? Now, we will try to call that procedure. There is a standard syntax, a standard way to do that. So here, actually, I have to capture my output variable. So for that, I have to bind this output uh, variable with my local variable. So that's where I'm, I'm just declaring one local variable that is out status because this procedure is even trying to give some output, right? That is status. If everything is done success, then it will just print success, okay? Then we have to use this call keyword, right? And uh, you are passing these two data sets right and uh, output variable and then end you have to again put that into a anonymous blocks okay for example let's say if you have to if you are scheduling uh, uh, your anonymous blocks you can do that but you have to if you have to schedule this right and for example you don't want to share this code with anyone right then you can create it as a store procedure uh, into a different data set and uh, you call that store procedure by using this anonymous block okay so here you don't have the complete code right so in that case it will help you and you can schedule this even anonymous block right i hope you got the difference now we'll try to execute this anonymous block which will call that procedure right so okay it's still running done right now we'll see the outputs now you can see the stats collected for only two data sets okay so and uh, and one more advantage with the store procedures right so it is a reusable code right uh, if you have the similar kind of requirement in some other uh, assignment or some other place right so they you can you can use a store procedure right uh, by calling it okay so i hope uh, it's clear and uh, it will help you right uh, so that's it for this video thank you thank you very much we will meet in the next video